Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, is in New York City tonight preparing to address the 74th General Assembly of the United Nations tomorrow afternoon. The Prime Minister will inform the world about recovery and restoration efforts underway in Grand Bahama and Abaco nearly a month after Hurricane Dorian devastated those islands. Arl Tavis Munnings is in New York City tonight. Good evening, Kishla, and good evening, Bahamas. Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis arrived here in New York City earlier this evening. And once he arrived in the city, he's hosting a reception for the Bahamians living in the diaspora here in New York. But the Prime Minister was preceded by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Darren Henfield, who's been representing the Bahamas here at this week's United Nations General Assembly. And Minister Henfield is joining us now to give us an update on what the Bahamas delegation has been doing since your arrival here in New York City Monday. Good evening, Minister. Good evening, Alto. Good evening, Kishla. Good evening, Bahamas. Uh, we have been extremely busy here in New York since arriving uh, last Saturday. Um, the first meeting we attended was on Sunday, where we attended a meeting led by the Prime Minister from Jamaica and the Prime Minister from the Netherlands, Solberg and Holness, uh, which spoke to climate action, where a lot of European countries were present and committing to doubling their their response to the Green Climate Fund. Uh, the, 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 the point that we noted was that the Green Climate Fund is there to help uh, build climate resilience in countries that are impacted by climate change, but it, it takes a little too long to operationalize. Uh, the, the, on our intervention, we indicated that the Bahamas is in need right now as we speak of the intervention of the Green Climate Fund. And, and so perhaps they can consider a, a ZAO of sorts that would be able to operationalize the fund readily so it doesn't take uh, an inordinate amount of years to achieve the objective that it is trying to accomplish. Um, the following day, we attended a meeting, a, a, a business meeting, a consortium of business people, uh, and, and we, we attended for the Prime Minister. Uh, the, the, the main topic was renewable energy and how do we build a, a, a clean uh, energy towards solar and, and renewables that will mitigate this issue of rising temperatures in the world and to keep to keep keep us below 1.5. Um, and so that was a very interesting discussion. Uh, and and we, we spoke about how, how do you make the Bahamas, Abaco and Grand Bahama places like that more, more resilient. It, it requires a lot of money to put uh, power lines in the ground, cable lines in the ground, where we can become more resilient and not be impacted by these events that leave us without power for months on end. There's several other meetings that, that we attended. Um, Today we attended a church service, uh, a prayer service that was held by one of the local Catholic churches here, where we were able to, to speak to the audience and speak to the solidarity uh, and the, the intervention of the world uh, toward the Bahamas, the amount of love and outpouring, uh, the fraternity that we have felt coming from all across the world uh, and, and within our region. The support has been overwhelmingly uh, gratifying and, and I think we we're on the right path. We, we continue to stress to them that we are still open for business. Uh, we, are, we are struck in the northern quadrants, but Nassau, which is the main tourism hub and our main uh, economic flow, is still open for business. We're still re receiving cruise ships. And, and so we, we continue to soldier on. We're, we're right now we're heading to a, a foreign minister's meeting for Commonwealth foreign ministers, where we will also be able to, to, to speak to them about uh, climate change and resilience building and how we must build resilient communities, how we must build uh, resilient economies and how we must build a resilient people. We cannot continue also to try and evacuate our people from the path of a Cat 5. We must be able to build resilient structures that will be able to house our people safely through a Cat 5. This is the new uh, normal for us in the Bahamas and we must adjust and I think we will. Um, Yesterday, we also attended a meeting with Prime Minister Modi of India. As you know, he donated $1 million uh, toward our recovery. And he indicated that India is posting uh, for the Caribbean region, through their resiliency fund, $150 million that we will have ready access to, to be able to help us to build the type of resistance that we need. We believe the world is finally listening uh, as it relates to climate change and the ferocity and frequency 
of these weather events like Dorian that come to displace entire communities. And we stress the point that you do not want to create uh, climate refugees by making it difficult to attract overseas development assistance or concessional loans to rebuild uh, in the way that we need it right now. And we want to inform you that Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, is expected to deliver the national statement on behalf of the Bahamas at the United Nations tomorrow afternoon here in New York. We encourage you to stay tuned to the Bahamas tonight for our coverage of the Prime Minister's speech at the United Nations tomorrow. Tomorrow. Reporting from the United Nations headquarters in New York City, along with my colleague Philip Marsh, I'm Altaviz Munnings, ZNS Network News.